Hey there, and welcome to our webinar with myself and Charles. My name is John Chow from johnchow.com, and my guest tonight is Charles from wordflow.com. Now, uh, yes. how this is going to work is uh, Charles right now is from sunny Hawaii on a big island, and he's enjoying fantastic weather where I'm here in miserable raining Seattle when looking outside, and I just see nothing but wetness. But, okay, uh, Charles and I are going to talk to you about how to get rich and famous with your blog. It sounds like a nice fancy title, but the truth of the matter is we're just going to show you how to create great content. Okay. Now, That's sorry, right, John. John. And uh, I just wanted, wanted to thank, thank you for that, for that nice intro and, and say aloha to everyone listening today. This is Charles of Wordful.com, Charles Bohannon, and we've got a great webinar today. Okay, now, now before we not... begin, hold on, Charles. Before we begin, a little... Uh, Thing for everyone, uh, questions. If you have questions, if you look at your your uh, go to webinar control panel, you'll see a question tab. If you have a question for Charles or myself, you can type in your question into the question box, and then at the end of the webinar, we will be answering those questions. So you can, if you have a question anytime, just type that in, and we will answer it to the end of, to the end of this webinar. Now, uh, like I said, my guest today is Charles, and like I said I first met Charles at the uh, affiliate.com uh, conference in Las Vegas. And right. that was a real great time. And I actually, like, I learned quite a few tricks on how to create great content from Charles. And uh, I'm planning those today. And I tell you, they have helped me improve my writing and my content creation skills. And again, we met Charles again at last, uh, just a while, or a few months back at the Affiliate Summit West. And that picture you see right now in front of you is uh, Charles and I at the, uh, that basketball suite at the, at the Palms Hotel. So that was, yes. that was a good time. That was a good, a good time. time. All right, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to turn this over to Charles, and he's going to talk to you about how to create great content. So why don't you take it away, Charles? All right, All right. Thanks, thanks for the intro, John. John. And again, yeah. aloha to everyone for being here on the webinar. Now, I want you to know that uh, it says how to get rich and famous with your blog. It's really not what you think, though. I'm not going to show you some, you know, some creepy, like, Ninja Guru marketing tactic here is actually something that's much more important and interesting than that. It's something that everyone needs, but not very many of us have. So let's get to it. All right, well, as it says there, I'm just going to give you the answer right now. Content, but not just any old content, great content. Now, this is something I'm extremely passionate about. It's pretty much everything I've been blogging about at Wordful since I started. And in fact, you could call it my mission. I'm on a mission to make sure that great content wipes out the bad stuff. Why is this? Well, great content is worth striving for. I mean, let's face it. There's a lot of junk on the web, a lot of floozy stuff out there, wasting people's time and wasting people's money. And you know what? You know, nobody really likes it. I don't like it. I don't think you like it. It's just not cool. So when you learn how to create great content, you not only have a fair chance of getting rich and famous, but you're also contributing to the greater good of the internet. And that's what this is all about too. So today I'm going to show you some real quick and easy ways to get better content for your blog. And as John said, at the end of the webinar, we'll be more than happy to take some of your questions. All right, well, so what is content? Well, everyone talks about it all the time. They say, oh, you know, content's king. You've got to have content, content this, content that. But, you know, do people really know what is content? So I made this slide so we can just talk about what it is for just a minute. Well, I like to say that content is the life of the web. It's information. It's the whole reason that the internet was built, to facilitate this huge mass of information. And why do people go online? Well, they want something, right? Well, it's what they want is content. Content is also mostly text-based. Now, it's mostly made up of all words. In fact, words, you could say, are the default building blocks of content. And this is how we give context to things like pictures, videos, musics. You know, we use tags, labels, and categories. We use words to define our content. And also, words give life to search engines. If it weren't for words, search engines wouldn't be able to do anything. So just remember this, words make the web work. And lastly, the difference between just regular old content and great content is that great content always adds value. So if you've got content of any kind of value, then you can say to assume that more, willing, more people are willing to devote more of their time, attention, and yes, money to it. Why is this? Well, great content has something in it for them. And one way to think of value is to make sure your content either enlightens 
or entertains people or both. So it's really important you get this. Great content always adds value. Now, why great content? Well, for one thing, it builds your credibility. People love it. People love great content. It builds trust, loyalty. People like you. It helps define your brand, gets you out there, earns you a lot of authority and respect. Great content is also a must if you ever want to be taken seriously, especially if you're trying to blog as a business, which I assume many of you out there are doing. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be a johnchow.com reader. <laughs> Now, great content also builds your confidence. If you're producing something that people value, naturally you're going to feel good about yourself. And after a while, the credibility and confidence build off each other, and before you know it, you're making more money because the value of your content just keeps going up, and everyone wins. Okay, I want to pause here and just sort of give like a bigger picture overview about the future of content. Let's put it into context. Now, I'm sure most of you heard that last month that AOL bought the Huffington Post for $315 million last month. And I mean, that's, that's good money. Now, keep in mind that the Huffington Post is the biggest blog in the world. And what Ariana Huffington did, she's the editor, by the way, she built a content brand out of the Huffington Post pretty much from scratch on the Internet. And what she used was a very highly engaging content. Now, content brands are they're nothing new. I mean, just look at the New York Times. But I'd say in the next two, maybe two, five, seven, ten years, we're going to start seeing a lot more smaller, more nimble web publishers emerge. And they're going to start to grow and dominate all kinds of niches. And there's going to be really huge upside in this. And the best part is, with the Internet, it's like really anyone's game. It's open to whoever can offer the right content to the right people at the right time. So the question is, are you ready for this? So just remember, now's the time to start planning for this because I guarantee it's going to happen. Start thinking about how to create great content. And you know what? We're just at the start, so now's the good time to get in. All right. So before I get any further and before you start wondering, who in the world is this guy? I just want to pause and tell you just a little bit about myself. My name is Charles Bohannon. I live in Hawaii with my family, and I'm a full-time internet marketer and blogger. And I absolutely love what I do. My blog is Wordful.com. You can go check it out. You can subscribe to it, and you can even subscribe to my newsletter called The Wave, which is all about, you know what, creating good content. So as far as my history, um, I've always been a writer ever since I could remember. You know, I wrote stories as a kid. Uh, I wrote a lot of essays in high school and college. Um, I've been something I'm very passionate about. I'm also one of the very lucky English majors who actually uses his degree every day. Pretty much all of my professional life has been spent creating, editing, or publishing some sort of content, either it's online or offline. You know, I've, been, I've worked in journalism, marketing, uh, a lot of email stuff. So all the stuff that I'm sharing with you today is all pretty much derived from my own experience, and it's all stuff that I've learned pretty much the hard way. You know, I didn't get this out of a manual, and I didn't really sit in a classroom and have someone uh, tell me how this is go going. So again, you know, I'm really passionate about this stuff. It's, it's my life. All right. Let's get into some problems here. Nothing about me. Let's talk about you guys for a second. Do any of you suffer from any of these problems? I'm just going to go over the list. You think your writing sucks. No one listens to you. You lack confidence. You can't seem to get into a flow. you got no patience and so on. By the way, that photo there, that's me about five years ago. No way. Okay, I'm just kidding. That's, <laughs> it's actually John. That's actually you, John. Before you went viral, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, let me tell you. All these little problems you see listed here, the things that I've been through. I'm sure John's been through at times. We've all been through it, especially when I first started. You know, I I really struggled for a while. Now, these are really common problems. The problems that no one, you know, no one really comes out and just talks about. But I know for a fact that each one of us always comes up and comes and experiences these problems every now and then. So if any of you out there know what I'm talking about, if any of you are feeling this, I'm going to show you a few things in this webinar that will help you overcome these issues. And all of these problems really have to do with two major things. First is your confidence, and the second is pretty much the quality of your content. And as far as I'm concerned, these two things are, are completely dependent on each other. So over the next several slides, I'm going to help you get comfortable with the basics of creating great content which in turn will help your confidence. So let's move on here. All right. 
Okay, so I've been pretty much obsessed with this whole blog content thing for a while, and over the years, I've developed a really simple system of creating great content. Now, for the sake of time, I decided to call this the three plus two formula instead of the five part formula, but it's actually a five part formula. So we're gonna really go into depth here with the first three parts, which is writing, editing, and publishing. And then at the end, I'll do a little bonus section on the marketing and mindset. All right, so let's get started. All right, we've got blog writing pillar number one, clarity. So when it comes to clarity, there's just three things you really need to know to create awesome content for your blog. The first one's clarity. Everything starts with clarity. So what does clarity mean? Well, it means that before you try to impress, persuade, offend, shock people, whatever you are trying to accomplish, before you do any of that, you have to absolutely be crystal clear in communicating your ideas. When your writing has clarity, it's very simple people will understand what you're saying. And from a strictly mechanical point of view, all this means that you need to use words and sentences that people can understand. Just say what you mean, nothing more. It's pretty simple, you just want people to understand you. Now, if you're one of those people who struggle with writing, then one easy thing you can do is just write like you talk. You know, usually when we talk to people, we're, we're fairly direct in what we're saying and you get the point across pretty quickly, right? Well, it's pretty much the same thing when you're writing. And then once you start doing this in your writing, once you get used to it and practicing how to be just the simple art of being clear, you actually start to discover your writing voice. That comes out and when that's when things get more relaxed and enjoyable and you really start having some fun. So remember, writing at its most basic level should always carry the virtue of clarity. Now, moving on to number two, personality. If you're going to be a blogger, you've got to have personality. That's pretty much what makes blogging different than any other kind of writing style. Bloggers are all about personality. And the first point there says, be yourself. Well, I don't really know any other way to put it. You've got to be true to yourself if you ever want to make a name for yourself, right? Doesn't that make sense? Otherwise, if you're not being yourself, you kind of slip into this uncomfortable no confidence zone where you try to copy other people. And you know what? It just comes out sounding awkward after a while. Second point there, use your real voice. I touched a bit on this in the previous slide. All this means is don't try so hard to sound like you're a writer. Just be as natural as possible. You know, relax as if you're talking to an old friend at your favorite restaurant. Again, you can think of this in terms of speaking. Everyone has a speaking voice and everyone's is different. People know when it's you talking, right? Well, the same goes with writing. Wouldn't you agree, John? Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, when I'm writing my blog posts, I generally write it as if I'm just talking to one single person, like, you know, we just, I'm here, the other person I want to talk to is right across the table from me, and that's how I write my blog post, just like I'm having a normal conversation. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, the fun part about blogging and being yourself online is, you know, once you kind of get to a level of comfort, you can start breaking the rules every now and then, and you know, just as long as you either, you got to at least know what the rules are, and they, or at least know that you're breaking them, but, you know, when you break the rules, it gives you a bit of an edge. You know, I think Shoe Money is kind of a good example of this. I, I think Shoe Money is a, a really, he's he a really interesting mistakes, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he's actually, I think he's a pretty brilliant blogger, and yeah, here's why. Yeah. I mean, his writing is not really the greatest, right? He, he makes these really irritating little mistakes, like misspelled words or grammar things that I would normally that drive purpose. like an English major like me, it'd drive me crazy, but somehow he's, he makes it work. You know, he gets his point across, he tells a really powerful story, and, and he's, he's interesting, and guess what? Well, he's just being himself. You know, in fact, I heard Shoe Money a couple of times uh, being interviewed um, about that. And he says, you know, I know I'm not the best writer, but I'll go in there and I'll actually make deliberate errors sometimes just to get people's attention. And the great part about it is it totally works. You know, he gets a lot more comments, he gets more attention, and you know what that means. He gets paid more. So a really cool thing I've noticed, too, is that Shoe Money's blog posts lately have been, you know, they've been actually pretty well written. It's almost as if he found, found some sort of, like, blogging nirvana. I'd say the same goes with you too, John. I mean, you guys are just comfortable and that's, that's just where you want to be. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about pillar number three. This is a big one, consistency. Consistency is what ties all of this stuff together. It's also the part that's the hardest to master, at least I think so. Consistency is nothing more than discipline. It's just, it, it's producing content on a regular basis so you set expectations for your readers and yourself. Consistency also builds reliability, and simply said, it's, it adds content to your blog. You know, when you're consistent, you're 
you're constantly adding content to your blog and it becomes a media asset. And yeah, I can't think of a better example, John, of consistency than yourself. And if I recall, I think you posted you post something every day. Isn't that true? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I can say I've been blogging since the, since December two thousand five, and from September two thousand five until today, my blog has averaged two posts per day for the last five plus years. There has never been a single day in the blog's entire history where there has not been at least one new blog post. So, and I feel that this level of consistency is being one of the biggest contributors to my success as a blogger. Yeah, I think that's a big deal. And also, I, I you also mentioned too that, you know, you don't, you know, we, we all don't have to be John Chow and post once a day, but you what you should do is you f should find something that's, one, comfortable for you, or, or and two, realistic, and just stick to it no matter what. Isn't that correct, John? Just, just be committed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, you know, I said, for the first eight months of my blog's life, it made zero. You know, like it didn't make any money at all. So, you know, I went from eight months making nothing, very little traffic. Like I said, after eight months, I only I got like maybe 1,000 page views a day. But yet for those first eight months, I did an average of two blog posts a day. And now that the blog is making over 40 grand a month, I'm still doing two blog posts a day. And I tell you, I tell you one thing, you know, if the blog goes back to making zero tomorrow, I'll still be doing two blog posts a day. Yeah, yeah, good for you. Well, that's awesome. You know, you know, there's a couple of tricks I use for improving consistency too. And um, one is if you just struggle with writing or, or you're you're inhibited, um, I like to write in the first person narrative, which just means using myself as the primary reference. Like I do this, I do that. So, like a, a you know, one example is you could say, well. You could say this. You could say breaking's, breaking one's leg is only a good thing if you're on stage, right? Well, I don't. it's not really comfortable to say that. So you you could just say, yeah, sure, I'll break my leg, but only if I'm on stage. Now, you see what I mean? It's just a lot more personal and easier to read and write when you talk like that. Plus, you know, it turns your writing into a story because you're more personally attached to the outcome. So I think things make things a lot more intriguing when you talk from a first-person point, first person narrative. Now. That's the three pillars there. We're going to go into a couple of interesting, interesting things here. I've noticed called a couple of myths of blog writing. The first one is the writing versus copywriting myth. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, copywriting is a really specialized style of writing in marketing that's designed to persuade people to do take some sort of like intended action. Like, so for example, when you want someone to come to your website and buy something or subscribe to your list or opt-in or whatever it is. You've used copywriting to persuade them to do that. Well, that's why you hear a lot of internet marketers talking about needing good copywriting skills. And you know what? It's absolutely true. You do. Copywriting is really important. But the myth part comes in is when people talk about copywriting like it's the only kind of writing out there. I hear this a lot. You know, I've, I just hear copywriting this, copywriting that. Well, I'm noticing that there's just too much emphasis on it these days. And I personally, it's, it's, it bothers me a bit. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I all, all I hear is just copywriting message after copywriting message, um, people trying to get me to do things and buy things and opt into things, I get pretty exhausted and eventually I just stop listening. So this is, really isn't what you want to do on your blog, at least all the time. You want to just do good old fashioned writing and that goes back to what I said in the past few slides. You just want to focus on clarity, personality, consistency. And the point of this is that there's a major difference between writing, which is what I obsess about at Wordful, and copywriting, which is something you'd find at Copy Blogger. You know, they're both necessary, and they're both part of you know, running a, a successful blog, but just know that there's a time and place for each of them. Now, second myth, the myth of the great writer. Um, this is a big, big one, actually. I think that a lot of people out there think that they need to be a great writer to be a great blogger, and actually, that, that's just a myth. You know, if you if you believe that, you should stop believing that right now. It's just it's simply not true. Here's the secret. You just have to be good enough. Now, like I said before, blogging is just all about ideas and personality. It's not like school. It's not college. It's not journalism. It's not fiction. Okay, you don't need an English degree or a writing background. All you need to do is write. So in case you're wondering there, that's uh, good old Ernest, Ernest Hemingway, and he's, he's being banned from blogging. <laughs> Which is really sad, actually, because he's probably one of my very favorite writers of all time, and it just kills me there to see him. But I had to ban him 
to tell us, to show you guys that you don't need to be the next Ernest Hemingway to be a great blogger. Just be yourself. And that's it for writing. We're going to move on to editing. Editing is a big, big one. Um, if you were to think of writing being the heart of blogging, well, editing would be the brain of blogging. It's basically where you take a piece of content, whether it's a bad piece of content, whether it's okay, whether it's good, great, whatever, you just turn it into something really awesome. Editing is really the essence of creating great content, and it's extremely powerful. It's something you guys have to learn. So what is editing exactly? Well, in simple terms, you can break it down into two parts. There's the proofreading part, which where you deal with the structure of your writing, and that's why. And there's also the part where that I like to call reading your reader, which is all about creating the right kind of content for your audience. So both are really important. So let's get into these in the next couple of slides. All right, starting off with proofreading. Well, most of you know what proofreading is right. It's it's just going over your writing to check for basic things like spelling, grammar, sentence structure, what have you. And you probably did it in high school. You probably did it in college. Well, the question is, are you doing it for your blog? Well, you, you really better be. <laughs> so like it says there, always, always, always proofread your blog posts before you publish them. You do this, and it's kind of, this actually gives you the most basic level of credibility. It also helps you, you know, helps you with your clarity, which was what I mentioned before. And you know, beyond that, when you, when you proofread your stuff, you can also make really subtle but powerful changes to your writing style to make it sound a lot sharper or tighter or smoother or more appealing to certain kinds of people and you know, you'd be surprised what you can accomplish when you do a really good proofread. Now I like to, you, know, I see, you see like the, there's a, um, a movie theater there, uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie, okay. Well I like to use the movie analogy when I talk about proofreading. So imagine you're going out to a movie and you're watching, you're watching the film and the film has not been edited. <laughs> there's like Scenes are out of order. There's like no music. Um, the dialogue's kind of messed up. There's not much sound or visual visual effects going on. It's just a huge mess, right? Well, I mean that would suck, right? Well, the same goes for your blog posts. Just think of them. Just think of each one of them like a like a mini film, like a short. You want to make it presentable. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be finished. Now, the technique I like to use I like to use for proofreading is super simple. I basically, I do my writing, I, got, I write what I have to write, then I just leave for a bit, I just walk away. Then I come back and the post, you know, it actually becomes something much different. It's out of my head and it goes into, you know, I'm realizing it's going into someone else's head. So I, I go through it, I refine it, and I just distill it until it's finished. And you know what? Readers notice this kind of stuff. They notice when you've taken the time, the extra time to, to proofread your stuff. And another thing about proofreading, uh, you don't want to take this too far. You know, you don't. You could you could proofread forever. Don't don't wait till it's perfect. Get your blog post out there and just make sure at least that it's clear. Uh, because theoretically, you know, there's no limit to what you could consider perfect. You could be editing forever and never publish anything, and that's just a sad story. So, and you know, one last point about proofreading: it helps to have a second set of eyes. My dad actually does this for me. He They'll call me up or send me an email. He, he always finds like these just ridiculous little errors that I've made um, that I never seem to catch. So, so proofreading always proofread your stuff. It's 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 a necessary thing. Okay, on to the next one. This is a, this is another huge one. Keeping your readers happy, reading your readers. Well, um, you know this is a, actually it's quite a simple simple concept. It just means knowing what your readers want and then giving it to them. And you know this you could. See this as like the executive job of the editor. It's like the one where you should you should really take time to learn this. And the way to do this is just listen. You know, you gotta listen to your readers, listen to your market, listen to what people are saying, listen listen to what they're not saying. I mean, in other words, you want to get a finger on the pulse of your niche. You know, and one way to one great way to do this, I've heard um, Brian Clark of Coffee Blogger say this quite eloquently, is um, you can you know you should use social media to listen. It's a great listening tool great um, market research tool. And so once you know what people want or once you have a good idea, you can start writing for them instead of yourself. And that's when you start turning, you know, you start turning readers into fans and then you turn them into customers. And um, that's when you can really take your blog to the next level is when you're actually producing a publication that, that 
that people are very interested in because you're writing for them. You know, and if you really think about this, um, this is kind of an interesting concept. The, the editor is actually sort of the same thing as the marketer. The only difference is that the editor controls the content. You know, and the content's often in these days is content is a product. So, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I personally like to call I like to consider myself more of an editor than a marketer, even though we're pretty much doing the same thing. But I'm not going to argue that marketing is definitely a very important thing to do, and um, I do it myself. So, anyway, just remember. Being an editor is a very valuable position to be in. And that's it for editing. We're going to move on to publishing here in the next slide. It's your blogging setup. So um, as far as great content is concerned, um, publishing is, is the another necessary part of it. It's a bit different than writing and editing, but it's, it's just as important. Um, it's basically like the non-content parts of your blog. It's the way you deliver your content. You know, it's the platform, the hosting, the design, the back end, etc. And the reason why, excuse me, the reason why it's so important is because you need to be, you need to realize that your your readers have to get their content in an easy way. You have to make it easy for them to consume it. You know, you also need a, a way to um, run your business on the back end, and that's a lot of what, of what publishing um, represents. So in the next couple slides here, I'm going to touch on publishing. All right, I'm going to go real basic here. Okay, these are just the must-have things you need. The three must-haves: the drop-dead basics of running a successful blog. Now you're probably <laughs> you're probably looking at this and thinking, "Wow, Charles, this is like really basic stuff." But you know what? That's the point. I'm just trying to show you how easy it is for anyone to become a blogger. Okay, so you need a computer and internet. That's that's more than obvious. You need WordPress. Now, um, most of you listening out there probably know all about WordPress, but I'll just go over it quickly. Is that uh, WordPress is the software platform that your blog blog runs on, and it's it's actually really awesome. I mean, you use WordPress, right, John? Of course you do. Yeah, all by WordPress. Yeah, of course everyone uses WordPress. Well, it's free, it's easy, it's really powerful, and the great thing about it is that there's so many people out there using it, and so many people passionate about it, and you know, myself included, is that that the development base around WordPress is is massive. So it, it just keeps growing and expanding and getting better. Now, uh, I'll get into WordPress a little bit on the next slide. Um, but the third thing that you must have if you want to be a successful blogger and make great content is you need some way of taking notes. Now, there's <laughs> there's two ways. Uh, there's both ways. You need both ways. The first one there on the right, the pencil, that's the low-tech way. Um, you know, you want to carry a, a pencil and notebook with you pretty much wherever you go. You, you know, think about it like a like a photographer. He, you know, the photographer would carry their camera with them wherever they go. If they see a good shot, they're going to want to capture it. It's the same concept. If you have if you have a good idea, then um, you're going to want to write it down, right? Capture it. Otherwise, you're going to probably lose it. And then getting a little more high tech. Um, I know you've talked about this a lot, John, too. And I, I use Evernote a lot. Evernote's wonderful. Oh, you introduced me to Evernote. Oh, Evernote's everything. Yeah, you it's introduced me to Evernote in, uh, at com. I saw you using it. I was wondering, what's that? Oh, that's right, yes. Oh, you oh you uh, saw me using it. You weren't using it then, huh? Uh, I, I used it before, but I didn't realize the whole potential until I saw you using it. Yeah, it's, Evernote's great. So, I, you know, I, basically, well, I'll just explain to Evernote if you guys don't know what it is. It's, um, it's like a cloud-based, like, note-taking app, really, and you can store... Um, text, audio, video, um, all kinds of stuff, and you get a lot of storage for free, basically. And then you can organize all your notes into different categories or folders. And um, but the great part about it is, you know, they have Evernote for iPhone, for iPad, for I think they have a Windows desktop version. They have just the web version. So everywhere you go, you can capture your notes in Evernote. And, and I mean, I, I I write a lot of things in Evernote. Pretty much everything, actually. So remember that. Take notes and capture ideas and use those tools, low-tech and high-tech. So low-tech still matters these days. All right. Now, there's the must-haves, and now there's the better-have. So you better have these things. Um, first one, self-hosted WordPress. You know, don't let that label intimidate you if you don't know what that is. But all, all that means is that you, you have your own domain name, your own hosting account, and you've installed WordPress on your hosting account to run your own blog. So if you didn't do that, you'd be using the WordPress.com system, which is um, sort of like 
for example, if, if John Chow did that, it would be johnchow.wordpress.com. I know for a fact, John, you probably wouldn't be where you are today if you had that kind of domain name. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, after that, you know, good design. You know, I, I, John, I think you actually have like a really cool um, hosting thing there on your blog that I saw for Skater Deal. Anyway, you guys should check that out. Um, oh, then there's design. Your blog, actually, you know, your blog has to look good. You know, we humans we're, we're visual creatures, and the more aesthetically pleasing something looks, not to mention functional, the more appealing it becomes. So, this is what a WordPress team can do for you. WordPress teams are, you know, just basically portable design files that you can install with a few clicks in your WordPress admin panel. And there's a lot of free ones out there, but personally, I I like to invest just a little bit um, in a premium thing. Um, they're they're usually have a lot they have a lot better support. They look a lot nicer. So um, looking to a premium theme there. And of course, last but certainly not least, we have the email list software. And I like using Aweber personally. I know John does. Um, you know, basically, the email list is just it's the backbone of your successful marketing business, right, John? Pretty much. I mean, uh, that's where most of my income comes from. Yeah, well, I totally agree with that. And uh, it's definitely uh, invest, worth investing to. It's also very affordable, too. So moving on here. All right, well, I've got a little bonus here at the end, towards the end here of our our webinar. It's about so a few blogging SEO tips. Now, um, you know, blogging and SEO actually go hand in hand, believe it or not. Um, you know, for, for one thing, if you've got a top spot in Google, if you've earned a top spot by some great... Uh, you know, a great article you've written is and it stays there. Well, you've you've pretty much earned yourself free organic traffic for as long as the uh, position in Google stays there. And this is a really good long-term strategy for marketing your content. And you know, the really good thing about SEO is that search engines love blogs. I mean, they like websites that are producing um, narrowly focused content on a regular basis, and that's pretty much what a blog is, right? So, so here's my top three tips. Um, if you're blogging for SEO, you always want to write for your reader. So this is the most important rule of SEO. You know, we write for people, not search engines. And it's, I'm sure you've heard that a few times, but I'm going to say it again. Just write for people, not search engines. You know, you need to make sure that your content is useful, relevant. You know, people like it um, because you're, you know, you're not writing for the machines or the algorithms. You're writing for people. Number two, um, stick to one idea per post. So when you create a blog post, you want to think like sharp and singular. You know, every post should cover no more than one main idea. Okay, so and all of your writing or content should go into supporting that idea. So if you got say maybe um, let's say you're writing and you've you have a you know you're on track and it's, wow that's just a great idea and you start writing about that great idea, well, I I recommend you don't do that actually. Um, split your content up into maybe two posts or however many you need. And a really good technique that a um, that copy blogger recommends is to write your headline first. Um, so you write your headline, and then you sort of work you work backwards. You work you you build your post based on the integrity of the headline. And the third one there is plan your keywords ahead of time. So before you start writing, ask yourself, you know, what keywords would I want this post to rank for in Google? And once you know what they are, you can start writing your content with those keywords in mind. So, and don't try optimizing a single post for more than one main keyword and maybe even a secondary related keyword. And we're going to move on to the next here. Now, this is the second little bonus on improving your mindset and productivity. So, this actually might be the most important slide of this whole webinar as far as um, you know, your success is concerned, it just comes down to your attitude. You know, they say attitude's everything, and I have to completely agree with that. If you don't have a good attitude, you're, you're, just, you're not gonna be able to solve problems that very easily, it's that simple, you know? If you have a positive attitude, you know, it's just a lot easier to solve problems. You know, we all go through struggles, I, I do at times, and what I, sometimes when I'm really like down and out, I ask myself, um, you know, would my situation be any different if my attitude were different? And yeah, that's true. It is. So I, I keep a positive attitude and it, it actually really works. Attitude's everything. So 
starting there, you want to create value for others. So this has a lot to do with actually making money online, and some people don't don't quite get it yet. Um, that you know, if you want to get paid, you know, you've got to be generous first, and and you've got to be generous with your time and your content, and uh, you know, you got to create abundant value for people. So it, it, that that way, it comes back to you. And number two, building relationships. This is really big. Um, <laughs> when I first started blogging um, in, with Wordful, I, I kind of was just in, by myself in my in front of my computer, just blogging away and not really knowing like who was out there too much. And, and after a while, it it, it sucked. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a painful experience. It's hard to get anywhere as a blogger if you're just all alone by a computer all the time. You got to go out there. You got to meet people. You know, you got to make friends, and it's good to. I think it's good to meet people who have skills that are different than yours, and you guys can help each other out. I mean, think about Ariana Huffington. I, I talked about her selling her you know, Huffington Post for three hundred fifty million dollars. Well, I, there's, there's no way she would have sold it for that much if she were just hidden away behind her screen. There's just no way. So. In fact, you know, this, like John said at the beginning there, this is how we met. I went to my first internet marketing conference and, you know, we hit it off. We talked a little bit. We shared some ideas and we had a great time. And last there, uh, don't be a content glutton. Kind of coined that term myself. It's like a content glutton is someone who just spends all their time reading, consuming other people's content instead of making their own. This is a very easy trap to fall into. Um, you, you know, you, you just spend... It's just so tempting to just open your browser and start reading emails or news or whatever, and before you know it, you know your time's gone. You've, you've actually you've made nothing, so you've wasted a lot of time. Um, so you know you don't want to get trapped in that. It's just kind of a to me, it's a it's sort of a sad, terrible fate if you just you know read all the time and don't make anything out of it. Um, so what you should do is just cut down, cut down on the content you consume. Go out and make your own. And be a producer. I want to that. In order for to be a leader, you know, sometimes you have to turn your back on the crowd. So think about that for a bit. That's some that's some good advice. So, so now you guys have stuck around for this webinar. Um, John, do you have any any closing comments here? Before I, um, well, I think that was pretty good. Uh, you got something you want to share with us? Uh, but I do have an idea I want to share with you a little bit afterward. But yeah, you you go first. No, that'd be great. Well, um, sure. Well, before before we do that, I just want to let you guys know about a special ebook that I wrote called "The Blogger's Guide to Creating Great Content." Um, it's actually a book that Mr. John Chow himself suggested I write when I first met him back in Las Vegas. And John, I'm actually really grateful you mentioned that to me because uh, what it helped me do was um, kind of get out of my head a bit and put a lot of my um, philosophies and ideas and and methods down into uh, something that someone could really find useful. I put a lot of good energy into this book, and I just uh, my intention is to help people, help people like you out there listen to the webinar, become you know great producers and awesome bloggers, you know creating content that just gives you the confidence, attracts attracts people, raises your credibility and your authority, and best of all, you know raises the value of your content. So basically, people are willing to pay more for it. So as you can see on the slide there, um, it's over 100 pages, and that's actually not the real cover. <laughs> the cover looks a little different. So it's very beautifully designed and illustrated inside. And again, this is all original, tested content. Um, I don't know, it says March 10th there. I don't know, that's good. <laughs> okay, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> anyway, it's original, tested content. Um, this, you know, so all this stuff I, I just completely discovered on my own. I, I haven't stolen this from anywhere. This is all, all from within. It's all stuff that I've, I've used and it's worked for me. Um, it comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee. And this is a big one, free lifetime updates. I actually plan to seriously upgrade this book. Um, I want to upgrade this probably by the summer. It's going to be a lot more substantial when it comes out. And, um, you know, it's, it's valued at $97, and I don't know, John, how you talked me into this, but for your readers, we're going to offer it for $37 until Sunday, March 20th, not March 10th. March 20th, okay. Yeah, I apologize for that. In fact, March 10th is a Thursday, and that's long gone, so that's not even going to work. So all you listen to there is actually March 20th at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. 
And if you guys are want to go get the book, John and I have created this special page for you guys. So go download it right now. Right there, jclink.me slash wordful. You can go there and download the book. And John, what did you think of the book? Are you read it? Yeah, I read it. It was fantastic. It was just, it was a really, really good read. I did enjoy it. Like I said, uh, I did not know there was actually so much to do besides writing content. But uh, you know, I do like your main theme in the book that's you know creating great content is about clarity and all the major point that you talked about in your webinar. But uh, you know, for for someone who wants to get down to nitty gritty and some of the finer points, obviously we only have an hour here, so uh, we can't really get down to nitty gritty and how do you condense a hundred plus page book down to one hour? It's pretty much just impossible. So that's one of the reasons I encourage you to write the book because if we're trying to explain all the concepts that's in the book, we'll be here for well, the next three or four hours. So I don't Yeah, know. and it's got definitely a lot more um I mean I really just just blazed over a lot of the stuff here because for the sake of time and for the sake of taking your guys' questions and getting maybe a little more in depth with you guys the questions, but um, the book is uh, it's um, it's been well received by the people who read it, and it's got a lot of stuff in there that's going to help for sure. And uh, Joe, yes, were you were you just showing us why we need to proofread? <laughs> that's right, Joe. You're right. You got me. <laughs> my dad didn't read the my dad didn't read my slides. He didn't catch that that silly error. Um, yes, I should have put March 20th, not March 10th. But um, again. Um, if you want to go there and get the book, it's available. And actually, I didn't even mention this on the slide, but um, it comes with a free bonus that I created called the Great Content Cheat Sheet. It's just a, it's like a quick reference guide to some of the things we talked about here to help you guys create better content and some of the things that are also in the book. So um, that's the free bonus that I'm offering you guys for ordering today or through Sunday. Now, I think we want to do some questions, John? Yeah, I see. Quite I'm up for questions. I, I love questions. Yeah, actually, before before you do that question, can you bring back the last slide with the... Uh, with Absolutely, the sure. Okay. Now, uh, I I didn't even tell you about this, but I just thought this up, you know. I'm, I'm writing an e-book on advanced email marketing. I know some of you have read my my uh, current five blog posts about advanced email marketing. Yes, where I've, I been, about, I've, I've been reading those, yes. Uh, all those little cool techniques to improve your email list and get better response that a newbie or a new person would not know about. And and what I'm doing, I'm read, I'm going to write an ebook about advanced email marketing, and uh, basically sticking those posts that I've written so far, expanding on it, adding even more techniques, uh, going into how to build the email list, how to get your first 500 names, that kind of stuff. And what I've done is like. I've started on it, but not finished yet. But I tell you what I'm going to do yet. What I'm going to do is if anybody orders your book between now and Sunday, my, when my ebook comes out on advanced email marketing, they're going to get it for free. Wow, that's amazing. That's so, that's very generous of you, John. Buy Charles' ebook, and you'll get mine for free when it's ready. So all you got to do once you buy the book, uh, just forward me the receipt to John Chow at johnchow.com. And I'll put your name into my VIP list so people to send a book to when it's ready. So uh, I don't know how much you can sell the book for, but obviously it's going to be probably pretty much equivalent to what you would sell your book for. So here you go, two for the price of one. All right. So that's, wow, that's, that's my great, John. Well, that's, a, that's an awesome offer. All right. So let's get to some questions here. And the first question uh, I have here was like, how big should my blog post be? Like, uh, you know, is there a particular size of blog post in terms of word count? Like, what's the idea of word count? That's, a, that's actually a great question. And um, the short answer is there actually is no answer to that. Um, I would say that as long as you are communicating, you know, clearly and you're, you're interesting and you're not, you know, using, you're not saying things that aren't necessary to say, uh, and you're capturing people's attention, then then it can be as short or as long as you want. Um, I've read 100 word blog posts that have, have blown me away, and I've also read 3,000 word blog posts that have done the same. I mean, I know I, I personally, I, I'm kind of a um, for me, it's no less than 300 words, and probably no more than maybe eight or nine hundred. Sometimes I'll I'll go out and I'll do like a maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred word blog post, but that's when I'm really feeling. Uh, Feeling jumpy. 
How about you, John? Yeah, I think you're you're kind of a three to five hundred word guy. Posts, uh, I try to keep my posts around two to three hundred words. That's my average blog post. Two to four hundred words, I would say, is my average blog post. But when uh, sometimes the post will get to over a thousand words, and like those are the, will be the the pillar articles, you know, because I do do two blog posts a day, every day, on average. So therefore, I can't obviously cranking out one thousand word blog posts. Two of them every day would be a uh, a Herculean job. So uh, I do try to mix it up. But most of my blog posts are shorter posts because I, I am a more prolific blogger. But uh, I try to do, you know, a, at least one big thousand plus word blog post a week. But the rest of them will be will be shorter blog posts and quick and you break them that way. But for the search engine, yeah, like yeah. if you're a search engine guy, I would say uh, most search engine, uh, and if most search engine will index you nicely if you keep your blog post just above 200. Like below that, search engine will grind, but won't be able to get enough information to figure out what you're trying to talk about. Right, and there's also video. I know you use a lot of video, John. I'm I'm personally yeah, uh, that is one a little of the shy. And I'm not too good at video. What's the best way to use videos. video? And the rest of the best way. What's the best way to use video? I do find that I do use video a lot in in my blog post now because you know if a picture's worth a thousand words, a video must be worth more. <laughs> right. and, <laughs> and it and, yes, I agree. yeah, it does help uh, people. You know. People like to interact. You see, instead of reading, you're also seeing verbally, and it helps build your brand and stuff. So I do, I do try to incorporate video into a lot of my posts whenever I can, and it just adds a new way for me to create more content. So uh, I definitely, in addition to normal publishing, video would be something to look forward to look at. Uh, one person did ask about legal issues, like uh, you know, can I embed any YouTube video onto my blog? And the answer to that is, uh, if YouTube allows it, then yes, you can. You see, the publisher has an option on YouTube to turn off embedding, and you will see that if you're trying to embed a YouTube video and you don't see you don't see the embed code, it means they turn off embedding. So anytime if you see the embed code, you are allowed to put it on your blog. No, no legal issues, oh. no nothing. That's good to know. That's right. good to know. So right. one person gonna... asks, any must-have plugin we should have for our blog? Wonderful. What kind of plugin ah, yes. do you use? Um, well, of course, the the built-in one. The I don't know how to say it. A Kismet or something. It's a spam filter. Oh, spam filter. That's obviously sure. necessary. Um, I use. Boy, I don't. I use. Uh, I use one called Scribe SEO, which is actually really good. It helps me with my SEO. Um, that's worth checking out. I use that all the time. And there's backup. WordPress backup. WordPress backup. Uh, you don't want to be caught. With you out your WordPress backed up, trust me. I've yeah, I back up my stuff to uh, to VotePress, VotePress.com. That's uh, that's a service that's owned by WordPress. They're on the creator WordPress, and it backs up my blog in real time. So anytime there's a new comment, a new blog post, but mostly a new comment because I do get lots of comments on my blog. But instant someone makes a new comment, instant backup. Like it's not a scheduled backup, anything like that. It's instant backup, and every hour there is a full backup of my blog made. But in the meantime, the plugin that WordPress gives monitors my blog for stuff that's happening, and mostly a new comment comes, it starts backing up on the fly. But the downside wow, is it costs cool. money; it's fifteen bucks a month. And but uh, wow. you know, and so you, you have to make a decision. And if your is your blog content worth protecting for fifteen bucks a month, and of course, in my case, it's it's a no-brainer. But you know, so right. yeah, All right, so fifteen bucks a month is just great peace of mind for me. Another one that I, I really like, and from a content standpoint, you might look at is free. It's called After the Deadline. So just do a search for that at, at, uh, at WordPress.org. Uh, yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard yeah, of that. It, it's a proofreading That's plugin. That's editing software, yeah. Editing yeah, software. And it, it proofreads your blog. It uses, they claim, artificial intelligence to look at your sentence structure, your grammar, and your spelling mistake, that kind of stuff. And it makes suggestions how you can improve upon it. So, uh, And it, what it does is it adds a button to your WordPress editor screen called proofread. So after you write your blog post and everything before you hit publish, you hit the proofread button and it will proofread your post. And it's free. It's called after the after the deadline. So definitely check that one out. All right. Okay. Well okay. I think we'll take another question here, John. Should I blog about one topic or multiple topics? Hmm. That's a yeah, that's I one of those need more through. I need more information on that question because you know, if you're going to write one blog post, your one blog post should be about a single idea. But as far as having a, a topic 
for what you're doing in general, I would say um, yes, you should have, you should focus on, there should be something about you that's, that's distinct and interesting and, and unique for sure. Yeah, I, generally most blog, I recommend most bloggers to stick with a, a targeted niche, a niche topic, like, but it doesn't, but don't make it so narrow that you have nothing to write about. Like, you know, for example, let's just say you start off as an iPhone blog, right? And you talk about iPhone and to, ex I'm sure, well, there's probably a lot of information about iPhone. I'm, I'm not sure if you can fill two blog posts a day with it. I'm, you probably could, but by example, but, you know, to expand, you might, to expand, you might add other products that's related. Instead of just iPhone, you can now go to Blackberry and Android, you know, and then become a, a general smartphone type blog, that kind of stuff. But as long as you stay with the same vertical, right? But don't have an iPhone blog and then talk about cooking. You know, <laughs> that's what I mean. But yeah, it's fine right. have an iPhone blog and then expand to other type of phones. But you don't want right. to you don't want to expand so out that you just become a content farm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Another way of looking at it is is you yourself could be the topic. Like, let's say you've got just some uh, just a really uh, extraordinary personality and you just have this natural ability to, to attract people or maybe uh, to, to detract people but, but um, you know you if you're that interesting you could actually maybe talk about anything and, and people people think it's cool that's that's a lot of people are doing that personality blogs mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay let's try a few more questions we have time what why should I have a email list in the beginning when I have nothing to sell in the beginning? Oh, oh. there you go, John. I think that's uh, <laughs> yeah. you're an expert on that. All right, answer. now why do you need an email list from the very beginning, even though you have no product to sell? Now, the email list is for a lot more than just selling a product. The email list can be used for so many things. First of all, you want to build your list because it's what you're going to use to establish a relationship and build trust with your readership. And then you can use, so this list is not for selling products. When I started the list, it wasn't to sell stuff. I started the list, is to build relationship. It allows me to get in touch with my readers again. Because picture this way. Someone, when somebody comes to your blog, they will either come from your blog, either from a link from another blog, or they come from a search engine. So when the, pers when the person first hits your blog, he doesn't know who you are. You have about 30 seconds to establish who you are with them. Because once they leave, within 30 seconds, they'll probably forget who you were. So in that 30 seconds, you have a choice. Either your content, your blog post that you wrote about is going to capture their attention enough that they say, hmm, this is pretty good. I should subscribe to your RSS or maybe bookmark you and come back again later. So, but if they don't do that and they leave, that is all. You lost that reader. He's gone. You're never going to see him again. So That's right. It That's is vitally right. important at that time, within the first minute them or well, first 30 seconds of them seeing you, you need some way to capture them. And this is where the email comes in. So usually within the first 30 seconds, everything in my blog is geared to, you know, subscribe to my blog. Because once I have the email address, I now have another way to communicate with that reader. So then when I have create some great blog posts, I can now I can now email that reader and say, you know, thank you for visiting my blog, you know, a while, while ago or whatever. I wrote a new blog post called this and I can link to it. And now I'm using it to drive traffic back to my blog. So that, and that reader who may have forgotten about me is, hey, I remember this show. Yeah, I subscribed to him. So, you know, he wrote some new content. So that's why you want a email list from the very beginning. And figure, if you would start another blog, like you launch a new blog that's, you know, a little, maybe a little different than your current blog, but your email list is now a perfect vehicle in which to help launch your new blog. So, you know, if I were to start a new blog or something else, I could blast it to my list and say, hey, I started a new blog. Why don't you come check it out? Give me some feedback. So it's a fantastic vehicle for doing that. And that's why you should start your list from the very beginning, even though you have nothing to sell. Because it's, it, it's, not, it's not only a money maker, it's also a traffic driver to your own blog or to anything else yeah. you want. Yeah. There's a certain, I, I personally think there's a certain intimacy when you send a, a message um, versus just a blog post because the people who are getting that message have, have actually chosen to listen to it. Yeah. All right. So we got, we got a whole bunch of questions more in and we're running out of time. So we'll try, let's run through some of these real quick. Sure. Uh, sure. 
how beneficial is it to use a various social media platform to reach your audience like LinkedIn, Twitter, Foursquare, all that kind of stuff. Uh, for me, I basically concentrate on Facebook and Twitter. They, they're the two biggest, pretty much the two biggest social media outlet out there. Whenever I publish a new blog post, it goes on Facebook, it goes on Twitter, and everything else is uh, pretty much secondary to, in my view. I don't know about you, Charles. Uh, I'm pretty much the same, John. Uh, Facebook and Twitter, I, I'm not um, too savvy on, on Foursquare or yeah. um, Quora. I'm not, even, I'm not even sure what Quora is, but uh, yeah. And you can set up your blog post to auto tweet. Your, yes, you can do that too. Whenever you publish them, you auto tweet your blog post, and then you can have that actually go into your um, Facebook uh, wall as well. Okay. How do I get the email address for a reader? Well, uh, that will be explained when I write my advanced email marketing book, which will be free with Charles' book, so there you go. But basically, the easiest way to get the email address <laughs> is just to ask for it, uh, offer them some free product or some free ebook, some something free, and it's sent to them to say, subscribe to my blog, and uh, sign them up using uh, a mailing list service such as Aweber or whatever you mailing list service you, that you run. Is this presentation going to be posted? online on my web blog or anything else yes this presentation will be posted and we'll be all recording it so it will be available yes uh, yeah, and you can watch it uh, after the fact here if and, I write um, 10 posts how many of them should be used to drive sales what's a good rule of thumb alright well, uh, what was the question I... if I write 10 blog posts how many of them should be used to drive sales what's a good rule of thumb okay well, um, I've always heard that, in fact, Jonathan Volk said this, it sounded really cool, was that you should keep a content score of, of positive four, right? So every time you send uh, you know, a piece of content out, and it's, you're not asking for anything, you're not asking to, to sell, you know, for people to buy anything, you're not selling anything, you give yourself a plus one. And every time you send out a pitch for something, uh, subtract one. So if you you can do the math there. You can figure out that you should keep a content score of positive four. Okay, there you go, John. I have noticed that you use Vimo over YouTube. Is there a reason? Uh, that is not true. Uh, I use YouTube. I used to use Vimo back when Vimo offered HD embedding. Now that YouTube offers HD embedding, I have switched back to YouTube. So uh, I no longer use Vimo. I use YouTube now. You mentioned focusing in on one or two keywords. I'm wondering what's the advantage of doing that. Oh well, um, the the way that I guess search engines or, or to say Google would uh, find the way you know if you search for something in Google, what you get back is usually exactly what you're looking for, right? Well, it, it, the same would go in reverse if you're if you're creating something for let's say that Google is going to see. You want it to be as specific as possible. So, therefore, if you have uh, if you've got one or two keywords in mind, don't don't do any more than that because your blog post will just be too broad, and uh, Google won't know what to do with it. They won't it won't it won't consider it a relevant answer to something that someone's searching for. Okay, and uh, I guess the last question goes to uh, Kirk Taylor. He says, "Do I get a bonus for being the first person to purchase a ebook?" <laughs> Hi, Kirk. You can be the first person to get. <laughs> yes, yes, Kirk. To you get, you get a bonus. I'll tell you what I said. I'm seeing you on Friday, and uh, we uh, the drinks are on me on Friday. There you go on the NBA game. How's that? That's your bonus. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, that about wraps it up. I want to thank everyone for showing up. Uh, we had a great time. Yes, here. thanks and, very much. Yeah, like I said, uh, thank you, Charles. And uh, if you want to pick up Charles' new book, you can definitely get it at uh, gclink.me slash wordfo. And uh, like I said, if you do purchase the book, you will also get my email marketing ebook for free when it is done. So like I said, purchase yeah. Charles' And my book. bonus as well, the cheat sheet. That's right. The content so, cheat sheet. Yeah, so purchase uh, Charles' book, forward me the uh, receipt, and I'll add you to the VIP list to uh, get my free ebook when it's done. So uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, coming to this webinar, and we look forward to seeing you at a future webinar. Aloha. All right. Aloha, everyone.